Our top story, staggering allegations are emerging at the state capture inquiry. It's claimed the company, now known as African Global Operations, spent up to 6 million rand in cash per month on kickbacks. The former chief operating officer of Busasa has implicated himself, his former boss and colleagues in corruption. Our reporter Aaron Bates has been following proceedings and joins us in studio. Aaron, there's so many details to talk about tonight. Bags of cash, it's all dodgy but juicy. Tell us the details. Well, what's been so astounding is that the 2019 state capture inquiry hearings have really kicked off with a bang. And Angelo Agritzi, the former CEO of Bosasa, has detailed his own involvement in paying bribes, in packaging money into these plastic bags, and then issuing them to the likes of AXA officials. And he gave us detail on that amount of up to 6 million rand cash per year, I mean per month, never mind per year, uh, paying these bribes. Let's have a look at what he had to say your first recollection of how much they, the company was spending in bribes per month in this way. Uh, are you able to enlighten me on that? Yeah, I can enlighten you, Chair. Um, are you just talking about cash, not other favours? And about this monthly ca cash? cash yeah, the, the Between four and six million rand a month? Four to six million rand a month? Yes. Okay. But, um, you give that evidence later, but you will also tell the Chair of the relation between that amount and the turnover or profit of the company as a whole. Yes. And in relation to the overall profits or the overall income, even the overall turnover of the companies in Correct. the Precisa Group, was it a significant proportion? No, it's a drop in the ocean. It wasn't a big proportion, it didn't stick out. And of course, Aaron, there's so many people going hungry in our country, but we heard testimony about allegations of groceries actually being bought, meat in particular, and these are allegations, we must say, uh, uh, for union boss Simon Moffakeng. Explain that for us. Yes, so the allegation there from Agritsi is that Mofo King gave Bosasa information on the competing bids for a Sassol tender and provided that information to Bosasa officials, including himself, and Bosasa was then able to make the winning bid for that tender. And in return, in recompense for that uh, information that Mofo King had provided, he was then put on the Bosasa gravy train, alleges Agritsi. And this involved monthly payments. So Agritsi basically gave us uh, bribery 101, you could say, that this company worked on providing monthly installments to ensure that uh, the people they were cooperating with and uh, colluding with, uh, their lifestyles improved. They became dependent almost on these monthly installments instead of having a single lump sum of bribery money. And so he described these tens of thousands of rand that we're being spent on buying maize, buying cool drinks, buying meat itself. And when uh, Mofo King was aggrieved at the delivery, this is what happened. A lot of the times the directors would come in and ask Gavin for money because they need to sort this person out or that person out or they need to literally um, pay bribes. So when they asked for money, yes. is that the description or the word they used? Yes. Okay. So Gavin would then go to what I referred to specifically and everybody else did as Gavin Safe. Now, Gavin Safe is situated in the walk-in vault, and there are numerous walk-in vaults at Bosasa. must be about eight. What is a walk-in vault, just for those uh, of us who have no security experience? A walk-in vault is, is what you see on TV. It's got a big vault door, double thick door, and it's got walls around it with a solid concrete roof, and normally there would be shelves or something inside. That's a walk-in so vault. No windows? No windows. And a high security metal door. The beauty about it as well, yes, is it's impenetrable normally. Anyway, there was this walk-in vault, you say, behind the main boardroom? Correct. So the, that was Gavin safe. And within there, there is um, other smaller safes where lots of money is kept. And he would go, people would come to my office, ask for money, and he would have to leave and come back and leave and come back. And this was done openly. I mean, people would, would see the, the grey security bags moving around the company. Right. It's shocking, isn't it? Tell us about his demeanour while testifying. 
Well, I mean, it was astounding, Shahan. At times, he was so candid about the corruption that he was involved in, describing, for example, being the bag man for these grey bags of money that he says uh, Bosasa officials, including himself, were ferrying to Oatambo International to pay to AXA officials. And his demeanour was very matter-of-fact, very direct, very blunt on the corruption he's implicated himself in, along with the CEO of what was Bosasa, Gavin Watson. So Gavin Watson stands squarely accused on the test of Agritzi so far, and we've heard that there are about 38 people at least who are implicated, including three AXA officials and Morfu King from that union. And AXA, of course, releasing a statement responding. What are they saying? Well, not too much, although they do say they will follow due process and that uh, Agritzi has implicated both current and former AXA officials. They've said they'll cooperate with the inquiry, they're willing to make submissions as necessary, and uh, that they're going to look into this internally. Uh, but really, really serious allegations, and we haven't even even hit the real meat of Agritzi's statement. He's just getting warmed up here. You know, I said earlier mm. today, people talk about flames. This is a burgeoning inferno. We haven't heard that much about politically connected persons, except, of course, for the likes of Dudumieni. Yeah, well, her name came up again. I mean, we know her name for all the wrong reasons. Jacob Zuma's friend. What was it? Well, in this case, what Agritzi is alleging is that she disclosed confidential NPA documents to both him and Gavin Watson of Bosasa in a Pretoria hotel room. And Agritzi says he took photographs of those confidential NPA documents which pertained to investigations into Bosasa and alleged malfeasance. And the investigators for the inquiry have corroborated that the pattern on the carpet seen in that photograph or that series of photographs does correlate with the carpet at the hotel in question. And I understand from a journalist colleague who was at the inquiry today, they'd approached Dudu Mieni for comment. She's cried strakom over these allegations. Uh, but the evidence we have seen and that we're going to see from Agritzi includes those photographs, also video evidence apparently of Watson counting 100 rand notes in a pile from someone who's seen the footage, who spoke to me. And uh, that allegedly was also for a bribe. And then critically, audio recordings of alleged death threats, because this is a witness whose identity was kept under lock and key until he appeared today. And we understand he continues to remain under witness protection. In fact, Shahan, during proceedings today, I actually saw two very burly men coming with a, a jug of water. Another journalist actually picked it up first because we think uh, there's concerns over his safety and that, you know, water left on his table could be meddled with. Mm. So they're really concerned about his well-being. And we understand that he has been intimidated and threatened uh, over what he's going to disclose at the inquiry. It really is surprising. It's a web of lies that we're all getting little tiny pieces of. And the stuff of movies as well. You know, yeah. this is the stuff that ends up in movies, not yeah. the other way around. Exactly. Thanks so much for that. Appreciate it. Aaron Bates is our reporter monitoring the state capture inquiry quite closely for ENC.